Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 8 for the 5% series where we try to finish in the top 5% globally which means we do all right in the mini league. The way this works is I'm supposed to give you a smallish pool of players to choose from and I'll gradually refresh it over time and you should be able to pick any of these players and you'll do all right. If you're following this and you wildcarded last week you probably got above average. If you're following this and you didn't wildcard you may have got around average or slightly below. I'm following this and I got way below average but there'll be a separate video where I look at my team and I can show you how bad I did in that. But I was tempted to wildcard and had I wildcarded I would have done very well. Anyway enough about me and my woes in the team let's get on with the video. Most cards in this video have a white background but there are six other colour backgrounds they may have and they are as follows. Yellow means it's a new card to the system this game week. I only put in yellows that I think are worth having or are okay to have. So if you see a yellow card, it's all right to buy. Green cards are good buys. So if they're not in your team, they're worth getting in your team. Obviously not to break your team to get them. But for example, if you're wildcarding, it's safe to get in a load of yellow and green cards. Some cards are grey. They're bench fodder. They're basically cheap cards. You may never play them. They're in the system so that you have a bit more money to spend elsewhere. You really don't want to have more than three grey cards. If you can have fewer than grey, three, that's great. Blue cards are sellable soon. So they're probably okay this game week, possibly another one. But we're probably going to be wanting to offload them soon. So if you're wildcarding or getting cards in, you don't want to get a blue card. Orange is sellable. Don't buy an orange card. I'm suggesting if you have one of the red cards, you sell it. So if you're wildcarding this week, offload any cards that are red, orange and blue in this system. Get in ones that are yellow and green and the white ones are okay too. Hopefully it makes sense when you see the next part. Okay, that's the colours. Now on to the point. What happened last week and what we're going to do going forward. And by the way, I am wildcarding this week and I've not settled on my team yet. But I'll do a video either later tonight or else tomorrow night, which will be showing what my thoughts are at the moment and my current crazy team. Starting with the goalkeepers, the main goalkeepers that we have, hopefully you played one of these, they got an average of 4.5. There are two other keepers in the system, that's Flecken and Pickford, and one or both of these will be getting offloaded soon. They average one and a half. Brentford have just been very disappointing the last few weeks. They've got key defenders missing and Everton just can't keep a clean sheet, which is a real shame, unless you're a Liverpool fan, I guess. These are the uh, more expensive defenders. They average six points. And for the cheaper set of defenders that you are likely to have played, they average 12.8 points. That's assuming you had two of them. And then there's uh, there are some slightly cheaper defenders, which if they had to come off your bench because somebody like Botman wasn't playing, they may have come on for you. Regarding the midfielders, the more expensive midfielders averaged 11.4, assuming you had two of these. The cheaper midfielders averaged 8.6, again assuming two. And again there's a third page of defenders, but some of these will be getting taken out shortly. Uh, they averaged 4.4, assuming you had two of these. Regarding the forwards, well done if you brought in Watkins, he certainly did alright. So the average for the more expensive forwards was 9.5, assuming you had one of those. For the second set of forwards, and Morris was one of the captain picks, so if you had Morris as captain, well done. They only averaged four points, assuming you had one of these. Now, so that's the players gone. Looking at the average score, if you were doing this system, it was slightly above the global average. However, people I know that are doing this probably got slightly below global average, not all of them. If you did some uh, transfers, a couple of transfers, you may have got above average. I know someone doing this who wildcarded, they got comfortably above average. And I don't know anyone who did as bad as I did. So you could have done really bad. If you're wildcarding this week, then great. Choose a couple of decent keepers. The keepers is a place where you can save money. So if you pick the two cheapest keepers, that will give you a bit more money elsewhere. But a slightly more expensive keeper may get you more points. But there's been no, I think, outstanding keepers. I know some people are bringing in Leno. We don't have Leno for Fulham in this system. I just think over the next several weeks, he's not actually going to be great. He may well do good this week, but after this week, I'm thinking probably not so good. So he's not in here. Now, this is 
If you follow the system strictly, you should finish top 5%. If you're just using it as a guide, that's fine. You want to get in Leno, that's up to you. So Edison's 5.6. I'm not going to bring him in on my wild card. He's Because keepers are so much of a muchness, I don't think he's worth 5.6 because Man City often let in a goal, it seems. Then we have Pope at 5.5. I think he's a better bet than Edison. Onana at 4.9. He's been absolutely shocking. Man United cannot defend. However, if you've got him, the next game's home to Brentford. Then they're away to Sheffield United. The game after, next after that, they're away to Fulham. So if you're not wildcarding, it's okay to keep Onana. If you are wildcarding, I'd suggest you don't buy Onana. And then Johnston, his next game is very good, home to Forest, but then the games maybe aren't quite so good. The next, Certainly the next couple of games aren't so good. Neto's new to the system. Now, he's four and a half million. Over the course of the season, he's probably going to do all right. He does make quite a few saves. He's not outstanding, and there are some keepers cheaper than him in the system, but he's kind of all right, I guess is the way to say but it, we're taking a couple of keepers out and putting another keeper in. And I'd rather put in Neto than Leno. I'd rather put in Neto than Leno. At least they both end in O's. So that's nice. And have an E and an N. <laughs> so look at that. Um, Ariola 4.2. He seems to be first choice. They've got some nice fixtures coming up. Home to Newcastle, maybe not. Away to Villa, maybe not. But then home to Everton, away to Brentford. They have several nicer fixtures after that. And Turner at 4. We're not certain he's going to remain the first choice keeper, but he has been so far this season. So you, if you're wildcarding, you could go with Arola and Tona, Arola, Ariola and Turner. That would only be 8.2 then on your keepers, and it gives you a bit more money elsewhere. And if Turner does end up being on the bench in real life, you've always got Ariola anyway, so that's okay. Flecken, he's going to be out of the system soon. Now, they're away to Man United this week. Then they got home to Burnley, but after that, Almost certainly going to be offloading him. And the same with Pickford. Home to Bournemouth this week. But after this week, probably going to have to get rid of him. So defenders. Let's go through these. Trent, he's back now. Away to Brighton. Would not expect Liverpool to keep a clean sheet. Brighton have scored every game so far. However, Brighton have also let in goals every game. They let in six in the last game. So Trent's got a reasonably good chance of an attacking return. But long term, Liverpool have some very nice fixtures. Trent's very, very expensive. But if you can afford to get him in, that's great. Trippier is green. New, uh, against anyone, Trippier is great. And Newcastle has some good fixtures. He's definitely worth getting in if you can afford him. Robertson has some very nice fixtures. So these are three very, very good defenders. Could get some good points. But that's an awful lot of money. And you could save money getting much cheaper defenders. But the point of this system is just pick any players. You should be all right. But if you can bias the green and maybe yellow ones, that'd be good. Now, I've put in white from Arsenal. That's an, a new player this week. We already have Gabriel and Saliba. There's some doubt regarding is Gabriel going to be staying the first choice defender? What's going to be happening? Saliba. Saliba's probably okay. So I wanted to put another one in. White does seem to be quite attacking and his minutes seem pretty secure. He is the most expensive of the three, but I think he's also the safest bet of the three. And then we have a stupid man. He got minus two last week and now he's injured for maybe a month. So absolutely do not buy a stupid man. He's probably going to go down in price. Worth getting rid of, but you don't have to. And when he's back in maybe four weeks time, he's probably going to be popular and go back up in price. But he is going to be taking up one of your defender slots. Saliba, he's all right. Not a good fixture this week, but generally he's okay. Akanji, Man City are coming up to a bad set of fixtures. So Trippier, um, White's a new entry, but I would understand a lot of you wouldn't want to buy White because he is quite expensive. Trippier is very, very good to buy. Pedro Porro, Tottenham. Tottenham may get a clean sheet. Porro is very attacking, 5 million, but I think he's a very good player. Cash, very attacking defender, only 4.9. If you can get Cash, he's worth having. Anderson's a new entry. I resisted putting him in. But I think I have to put him in now. He's Palace do keep some clean sheets. Anson has got a couple of goals. He's quite a good player to be sitting on your bench and sometimes playing. If you buy him this week, you'll probably play him this week because he's home to Forest. Udogi, another... Or Udogi, I've heard different ways of saying his name. Another defender for Tottenham, a bit cheaper than Poro. And also attacking, 
they're both good options. Either one of those would be okay. And I know somebody who's got both of them and that's fine. You get good points sometimes with both. Gabriel, there seems to be some uncertainties about is he first choice, though he has played the last two or three games. I'm no Arsenal expert. You might find some Arsenal fan online who knows these things. But at the moment, there is uncertainty about him. Botman is injured. Looks like he's not going to play at the weekend. At time of recording, can't be sure. Colwell's nice and cheap at 4.6. So Chelsea have some not so nice fixtures coming up. But he's only 4.6. So he's fine to have. And he may just sit on your bench. But you can afford for him to be on your bench. I've put in Burn. He's a new entry this week because Botman's injured Burns slightly cheap he's 4.6 as opposed to 4.7 but Newcastle does some nice fixtures coming up and then on the third page of defense if you have Chilwell he's injured for a while get rid of him Pinnock he's on his last legs he will be gone almost certainly week after next Bayer he's still in the system because he's cheap and he plays he seems to play every week and he's only four million so he would enable you to get other people in and then Anderson would be offloading him soon. He's also 4 million. I don't think it's worth having two 4 million defenders. And Bayer would be, I think, the better one to get of the two. Anderson's just not playing. Salah, if you can afford to get Salah, and especially if you're wildcarding, he's absolutely worth getting, as is Son. There's no injury doubts about Salah. Son, there's some talk online about uh, he might have a slight knock. He might be a bit injured. He is getting on a bit in years, says me. If you can afford to get both of these in, that's great. But then you're going to have to make sacrifices elsewhere. If you could only get one, Salah is the safer bet, but he's a lot more expensive. Now, Rashford, Man United have a nice set of fixtures coming up. Rashford should be able to get loads of points, but they've been so disappointing this year. He's a bit of a gamble. But you kind of think at some point this season, United are going to suddenly start getting several good game week points in a row. But a lot of people are offloading Rashford just now. Saka is an injury doubt. If we knew he was playing, he'd be absolutely worth getting in on a wild card. The next game's home to Man City and away to Chelsea, but we don't even know if he's going to be playing. So if you happen to be wild carding and you happen to see come the weekend he's definitely playing or he's not flagged, then it might well be worth getting Saka in. If he's flagged, it's all right to get him in a couple of weeks. You might want to Take somebody else out and put him in. Odegaard, very good player, captain. Fernandez, like Rashford, should be getting lots of points. They've just not been performing very well. And then Madison, another green player, 8 million. Good set of fixtures coming up. Some talk about him maybe being a little bit injured, but hopefully he's going to be playing. Slightly cheaper midfielders. Foden, Man City have a bad run coming up. Bowen's green. Next game's home to Newcastle. Newcastle can leak goals sometimes, not too many, but it is a home game. But he's been quite consistent in getting points. And Bremo's going to be out of the system soon, I think, because Brentford have just been shocking. Diaby's he's down as red for the Derby game against Wolves, because at the moment we don't know if he's going to play or not. Now, after tonight, as a European game, we may have more information and we may know better whether or not he's playing. But at the moment, he's a doubt. So if you're bringing him in on a wild card, you want to make sure that you've got someone on your bench that can come in that's okay if he ends up not playing. Mitoma, home to Liverpool, way to Man City. Not great fixtures, but he is a great player. And after that, Brighton have got some nice fixtures. Ward Prowse, cheaper than Bowen, completely different sort of player. Not as explosive as Bowen, but he has got some nice points this week. He is worth getting as well. All these players are kind of worth getting, apart from Embromo. Neto's a new entry. He's been consistently quite good picking up points. If you want a cheapish midfielder who's going to be sometimes playing for you, Neto seems quite a good option. So we've got two new Netos this week. Obviously different players. Martinelli, flagged as injured. We have other, arguably better options for Arsenal and midfield. I think it's perfectly safe to sell him if you've got him now. Just get rid of him, get somebody else in. Even if you're not wildcarding, I think we should offload him. Sterling, we are keep him this week in the system. Maybe in a couple of weeks' time we might have to offload him unless he starts doing something amazing and Chelsea pick up. He's likely to be gone. But if you're wildcarding, perfectly safe to get rid of Sterling. Eze's flagged as injured. We, As far as the system's concerned, we don't know for sure that he's out. Um... But if you're wildcarding, perfectly safe to get rid of Eze. 
Gibbs White, he's kind of an expensive piece of bench fodder. Casemiro, another bit of expensive-ish bench fodder. I really like Casemiro. He's done really well in Europe, albeit he got sent off last game. Lerma, okay, he's out. If you've got him, he was only bench fodder anyway. He's injured. He's out of here. Nakamba, he's bench fodder. 4.4 million. You're probably never going to play him unless somebody in your team is unexpectedly injured and he's going to come off the bench. Regarding the forwards, we have Haaland. I've not got him as green. You should absolutely have him in your team if you're wildcarding because it's the safe thing to do because so many players, so many managers have him. And in the next six or seven game weeks, he may get 17 or more points twice. But the other weeks, he may only get four or five points, which isn't an awful lot for the money he is. But if you don't have Haaland, you're taking a huge gamble. Watkins, absolutely worth having. He's been very consistent this season. Jesus for Arsenal, although this coming game week's not so good. They do have some nice fixtures coming up. Wilson's flagged as injured. So I've marked him as orange. He's fine to sell. If you've got him, if I was wildcarding and I had Wilson, I'd be offloading him. Darwin is a gamble. We don't know who Liverpool are going to be playing up front. We know Gakpo looked a bit injured, but he may be all right. Uh, we, we just don't know. He... Darwin is a gamble because of minutes. If we knew he was playing 80 plus minutes a week, he'd be a very good choice. But because we don't, he's a gamble. New entry, Highland for Man United. So United have been shocking. But with him playing up front, him as the target man, it may be that Rashford and Fernandes can keep passing the ball to him and he scores. He's been doing well in Europe. So he is a gamble. He's not a gamble for minutes, but he's a gamble because he's with Man United and Man United have been quite shocking. So Darwin and Highland at the bottom there big gambles and Alvarez has been very very consistent doesn't matter who Man City plays from a set piece or even from open play he can get you five six seven points the cheaper forwards are only for Nottingham Forest 6.6 nothing to say about him Solanke Bournemouth have some nice fixtures coming up and Solanke quite often seems to be getting five six seven points so he's all right Vissa is going to be out of here soon I think because Brentford have been shocking Morris Keeping Morris in here, got him as bench fodder, but he's actually quite a good player. If you look, I think in the seven game week so far, he's got decent points in four of them. For only 5.6, he's all right if he's going to help you buy more expensive players elsewhere. Yeah, well, Pedro, I've got him as grey. I suspect we're going to be offloading him soon because there are cheaper strikers available. <sighs> yeah, I'm... He's, he's, he's such a minutes risk. He just doesn't seem to play enough to be worth having. If he was playing 80 minutes a week, he would be a very good choice. Adibo for Luton, but he's cheap. 4.8 here to sit on your bench. Archer, new entry. He's 4.5. He plays, but he would be sitting on your bench. And Embremo for West Ham. If you've got him, he's out of here. If you're not wildcarding this week and you've got him, you don't have to get rid of him. But he doesn't even play, so he will be out of here. So uh, the last five of those certainly would often be sitting on your bench if you have them. The goalkeeper bench order, the first keeper you see on the screen that you have, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. But with the benching orders I show you and with the captaincy, do whatever you like. This is just a suggestion or a guide. I'm suggesting if you have Fleck and Brentford away to Man United, he should be on your bench. If you don't have him, but you have Turner away to Palace, put him on your bench. I know some people online are saying they're going to play him because Palace are missing a couple of key players. But Forrest can let in goals, especially away from home. So playing Turner is fine, but he's a little bit of a gamble. I've got Ariola higher than him because he's at home, albeit it is against Newcastle, but he could be keeping a clean sheet. So if you had Turner and Ariola, I would be playing Ariola because I do favour the home game, but Turner may keep you a clean sheet. If you have none of those three, but you have Neto, the new entry, suggesting you put him on your bench. He is away to Everton. Everton do have trouble scoring, but they have scored maybe four goals in the last two games. So is he going to keep a clean sheet? Maybe 30% chance. Edison away to Arsenal. Probably not going to keep a clean sheet, but he may do. Onana, nowhere near as good as probably any of the other keepers on the page. However, he is at home to Brentford and Brentford is shocking. There's always a chance he'll keep a clean sheet. Then Pickford at home to Bournemouth. Apart from Solanke, Pickford's got a reasonably good chance of a clean sheet. And there's been other games we thought to keep a clean sheet and he still hasn't. And then Pope away to West Ham. 
Now there's one other keeper I'm not showing because if you've got them, I'm suggesting you play them. And that's Johnson for Crystal Palace. The reason he's not on the screen is I didn't want to do a second page of keepers. But they, that's my suggested order. To the, the first one you saw that you have, I'm suggesting you put on your bench. The first player you see that you have, I'm suggesting you put in position three on your bench. The next one, position two. The last one, position one. There are some good players on this page. There's nothing we can do about that. I've not included players that we're getting rid of out the system, like Chilwell. And I've also not included players that you will be playing, like Haaland. So, Anderson for Luton, Adebayo Luton, Archer, Nakamba, Bayer, Pinnock, Yael Pedro, Gibbs White, Vissa, Casemiro, all those at home should be an easy game. There are better players you could be playing. Morris for Luton, Byrne for Newcastle. Now, if Byrne is your only Newcastle defender, I suggest you have him a bit further up this list. But if you also have Trippier or you also have Pope, I suggest Byrne sits there. Hopefully that made sense. And then I've got the three Arsenal boys, Gabriel Saliba White, then Anderson for Palace, Arioni for Nottingham Forest, Neto, the Wolves midfielder, Embremo for Brentford, Colwell, Chelsea, Cash, Wilson, Ward Prowse, Ujogi, Diaby, Akanji, Eze, Solanke, Robertson, Darwin, Hoyland, Trent, Mitoma, Foden, Jesus, Odegaard, and hopefully from that lot, you've now got three in your bench. If somehow you haven't got three of these players and you haven't got a red player like Chiwa that you're having to keep, then I would say put your cheapest defender that you can on the bench. If you still haven't got a full bench, then choose your cheapest midfielder, I'd say, and put them on your bench or your cheapest striker. But you should be covered by this lot. Regarding the captaincy, it's a very interesting one this week. Now, Sun, among the engaged managers, is likely to be the most captained. But globally, Haaland's going to be the most captained. So Haaland will be the safest bet to protect your rank and move up. Sun, it's reckoned, could get the most points because Haaland is a way to Arsenal. Sun is a way to Luton. So both of these are very good captaincy choices. Salah is also a good choice if you want to have him. Apart from that, we're now moving on to slightly riskier territory. So Madison, I would take any of the other three over Madison, but Madison may do all right. Watkins, Watkins has been good, but it is a derby. With derby games, you always need to reckon there's a better team and a worse team. It always seems to get leveled a bit. Watkins may get a hat-trick. He may get sent off. I mean, you just don't know. Not suggesting he gets sent off, of course, although I said that. <laughs> Um, and then as a complete gamble, if you're crazy, you could go for Hoyland because they're at home to Brentford. Brentford have been shocking and I think he could be a target man. And yeah, a bit of a gamble there. <laughs> so Sun and Haaland are the two safe choices. If you happen to have both of those, you should probably make one of those captain, one of those vice captain. But you could go for any of these as captain, any of these as vice captain. As always, I'd suggest don't choose two from the same team. So don't choose Sun and Madison. If you don't have any of these or you don't have two of these for your third, for your vice captain, just choose one of your strikers or midfielders that got a good mention in this video. And if you're wondering about the picture, this is artificial intelligence's interpretation of the VAR team, when Liverpool scored against Tottenham, this is what they were doing. They're like, oh, had to make a call quick. What just happened there? And they got the call completely wrong. But don't worry, because Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of Great Britain, is going to do something about this shocking picture, and he's going to ban smoking. So this sort of thing won't happen again. There we have it. another unfortunately long video. They will get quicker, honest. I will find some way of making them quicker. Hopefully that made sense. I will try and answer any questions you have below and we've got a long way to go. We've got 31 weeks left. So if you're not in the top 5% at the moment, absolutely don't worry about it. We should be able to get there okay. Thanks for watching. Bye.